the issue of what constitutes evidence in complex social experiments like AF4Q is a very sticky one, and I've been in that in that arena for a long time. I have a very strong opinion of this, and uh, uh, unfortunately, I think it's not that thoroughly embraced. It's that in the pursuit of understanding of how to uh, get better complex social policies and interactions like F4Q, the randomized trial has virtually no role whatsoever. That is a way for learning in very pure environments where there's a pill A and pill B and randomization of patients to the pills is exactly, teaches exactly what we want. That's not how the world works. The world is com very complex. Every single site in AF4Q was very different from every other site. In that complexity lies a tremendous amount of learning. And when you treat the randomized controlled trial as the only way to learn, you basically put, put a blindfold on. And it's time to stop. The problem is that the randomized trial in other, in, in other in its usual forms in just evaluating, say, clinical pra procedures, it, it, made, it was a big leap forward. But we overlearned. And I think the evaluation community became much, much too bonded to that design. On the happy side, there are methods of learning over time with measurement uh, in complex environments that are very instructive, uh, realistic evaluation in real-time environments. The AF4Q evaluation team, by the way, knew that. And I think one of the strengths of AF4Q is the how, how Catholic and, and open-minded and yet highly disciplined in, in, in ethnography and anthropology and, and, and time series measurement that that program was. Um, so, I mean, my, my brief is really clear. Let's not tie our hands to a single method of evaluation and call it the prince of all methods. It isn't. It isn't. It's the wrong tool in the complex environments that we need to learn about to make healthcare and communities better.